Hello, I'm Christina with The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. In my last video, I talked about in my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall how smalls are selling. Smalls are hot. And so I've actually expanded my business at Plaza Antiques. Besides antiques, I also sell DIY supplies. I've decided to expand my business and add iron orchid designs to the list of items that I sell in my booth. And the reason for that is that helps you with small crafts. Small items are selling, so I am really excited. Plus, they have a lot of really cool things. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Iron Orchid Designs stamps. We're going to make a really fun Valentine's Day project. I think you could make these into ornaments. You could make them also into a garland, but you can just use your imagination and tailor them any way you'd like. The first stop for my project was the dollar store. I have to say, since they've raised their price to $125, their craft section has expanded. And it's amazing what you can find in the craft section. I was looking for something for Valentine's, and at first I didn't see any hearts. But there are so many items, I just had to look a little closer. I think this heart is going to be perfect. There were only a couple left, so I bought them all. For this project, I'm going to use the IOD molds. I am using Cameos. I think it's perfect for Valentine's Day. By the way, if you need any of the products that I'm using here today, you can get them on my website at shoptheturnedleg.com. These molds are great for air dried clay. You can also use them for resin and even safe for baking. One thing to keep in mind is you want to make sure you coat all of your molds with a little bit of cornstarch. The cornstarch helps the molds release. I'm using the air dried clay and this is my first time using air dried clay. I found out you really have to make sure you have enough clay and push it firmly into the mold. It's pretty much that simple. You will have a little excess clay and you can remove it quite simply with a flat item. I am using actually something from the IOD transfers that you use to put them down. Anything with a flat edge would work. Even if you have like an old gift card that you used up the balance on, that would be great for this too. And you just want to remove the excess clay because you don't want to waste any of it. You want to have lots for your future projects. I'm making a few cameos, a few hearts, and a few of the little birds. Make as many molds as you want for your project. If you are worried about the molds drying out, you can always pop them in an airtight container in the freezer. And that way they will stay ready for you as long as you need them. The next step is to arrange and glue down your molds, and it's really that simple. I'm doing it while they are still a little wet, so you need to be a little extra careful you don't smush them. I'm also using Tight Bond 2 wood glue because I'm gluing them onto a wood surface. One thing to really pay close attention to is to make sure that you get the glue all the way to the edge, so I'm using a plastic spoon to help me with this. Using a lot of glue is important because you want a good seal. If you have excess, I just use a Q-tip to remove the excess glue. You don't want it to dry onto your wood project so it is visible. You can use any of the IOD molds for this project and hopefully you can see how this can apply to future projects too. I am using the Trimmings 3 mold here. What I really like about the IOD molds is they give you the tools, but then you can just use your own creativity and make the projects the way you want. So I'm combining things the way I want them to look. I'm even bending them because they're flexible still. 
Remember how I told you, if you want to make a bunch of molds ahead of time and you don't want them to dry out, you can store them in an airtight container in your freezer? Well, I did that using the IOD rosettes mold, and now I'm just getting them out and gluing them down. The next step for this project is paint, and I'm going to paint them while the molds are still not dry. This reduces cracking. I'm using DIY paint. It is a clay-based, all-natural paint, and it is one of my favorites. Since this is a Valentine's Day project, I am choosing DIY paint colors to reflect that. I'm going to be using Kissing Booth Cherry Picked and Petticoat Pink. These are also all available on my website at shoptheturnedleg.com. The first color I'm using is Kissing Booth, and it is a real hot pink color. DIY paint colors do lighten as they dry. It's really important when you're painting your molds. I like to use a slightly smaller brush so that I can get the paint in all the nooks and cranny. And DIY paint is not self-leveling. So if you need a little extra paint to fill in some spots, you can just put it in and it will do a great job. This next color is cherry picked. And if you think these colors are a little much or a little dark, stay tuned to the end. I've got a great way to kind of tone these down and really bring out the details in the molds. See the gap between the mold and the wood? You can just put a little extra DIY paint in the gap and it will fill in. Now you let them dry. DIY paint will lighten as it dries, so you can tell when you're ready for the next step. DIY paint does need to be sealed, so I'm going to be using DIY white wax to seal this project. For more information on waxes, you can click on the link to the video above. DIY white wax is super soft and creamy. I'm going to pull some out in a paper plate and then just apply it. I'm using a small stencil brush so it can get in all the cracks and crevices and fill in. For some reason, I didn't record the wiping back, but once you apply the wax, you want to wipe it back with a rag. Work in small sections. I'm also using a Q-tip to get into the details. You can wipe back as much or as little as you want, but I like how it stays in the lower areas and really adds dimension to the piece. White wax over a dark color can really be dramatic, but you're also going to notice that the wax, when you apply it, is activating the paint underneath, and so it's going to turn a little darker. Don't worry, as it dries, everything will lighten up. Once again, work in small sections, apply the wax, and wipe it back. I really liked the white wax and the darker colors, but I felt the lighter pink ones were just not showing off all the details. So I had another trick that I was gonna try. This time I'm gonna try to use DIY dark and decrepit liquid patina. Because this is a liquid, I'm going to brush it on and then wipe it back. And sometimes when crafting, things don't always go as planned. So I really didn't like how this was turning out. The liquid patina was just not getting into the lower areas and doing what I wanted. So I changed gears. I'm now gonna put in some dark wax from DIY Paint. The dark wax is a brown color, but it does a much better job kind of getting into those lower areas and making things stand out. The best part about wax is you can layer them on top of each other to get exactly the look you like. I like the antique look I'm getting from the dark wax, but I also want to lighten it up just a little bit. So I'm putting some more white wax over the dark to get exactly the look that I want. 
Putting on more wax worked so well, I decided I was going to use DIY Golden Rule. Golden Rule is a gilding wax and it is gold. I'm just gonna use my finger to apply it anywhere I think needs a little bit of sparkle. You can also use a little brush if you don't wanna use your finger. But the DIY wax is all natural and washes very easily with soap and water. I also use Golden Rule on old hardware that needs a little bit more shine and sparkle and it will dry hard. I think the paint was not completely dry on this piece when I tried to wipe off the wax and it took some of the paint with it. Sure, you could touch it up with paint, but I also tried a little bit of the gold gilding wax just to cover up the spots that the paint had been removed and it worked great. I liked how the gold was turning out so much, I decided to add it also on the hearts I had painted with petticoat pink. Hope you enjoyed this video. Now let's take a look at how the projects turned out. Dollar Store wooden hearts have now been transformed with IOD clay molds and a little DIY paint. And you can make these to suit any taste or for any season. I think I'm probably gonna hang these with a little bit of ribbon as ornaments on a Valentine's Day tree, but you could also put them all together and make a beautiful garland. Thank you so much for joining me and for watching each and every week. Let me know which one of the hearts was your favorite. Have you tried Iron Orchid Design Stamps yet? Maybe you should. There are so many projects you can make. Now get out there to salvage, repurpose and create.